up guys, we're going Chasing Projects. I'm Jeff and this is your SoCal Fishing Forecast for Thursday, April 27th. And a quick look at our 10 day weather here. Uh, we still have some nice sunny weather, kind of sunny. A little bit of uh, any condition going on still uh, with some overcast skies, but so far it's not hurting the weather. Or I'm sorry, it's not hurting the water temps. But uh, we do have this cloud cover here, as you can tell, uh, this gray area reflecting uh, the percentage of it but uh so far so far so good looking pretty good uh quick look at our wind chart here this is thursday we got some nice offshore or nice uh offshore wind conditions here and uh you know it's not aggressive at all which is nice for once for spring conditions here um Really can't complain about that type of wind, honestly. That's as good as it's gonna get, really. Uh, Saturday again this weekend continues to look really, really nice, and same as into Sunday here. And we're really just gonna have a little bit of over overcast skies, a little bit of an eddy condition. Um, not until we get into later into Sunday evening into Monday, things look like they're gonna get really nasty. But I'm gonna let this play out here. For Monday here uh, because I'm not really believing what I'm seeing here and because as soon as we hit Tuesday uh, it goes away and if you follow this trend for the rest of the week although this is going way out here but the trend remains the same super light wind conditions so um, as for right, right now you know keep Monday under radar but typically when you get stuff that shows up like this and uh, might blow hard, uh, maybe for a day, if it does only blow for a day, great. Um, but usually this type of thing tends to go away um, if it's gonna be that brief in the forecast. So usually, you know, this is a, a trending forecast and this day looks extremely out of place for the trend for the remaining days, so. Um, but we can always go look back at the bigger picture. And, uh, you know, again, Sunday, so winds from the Northwest and just a quick blow through. So um, even looking at the Marine forecast here, I mean, this is only gonna go out to Monday night, 15 to 20 knots, right? I guess, wave, wind waves to four feet. This is way offshore. Um, so we'll see if it sticks, but it's really way too early to tell. It could get worse, which I kind of don't think it will. Um, or it could get better, which is kind of the direction that I think it's going to head in, but we'll see what happens from there. Uh, charts, man. This overcast is uh, not helping the charts, but we're going to use the 8 day to give us a good look at what's going on. We have nice, trending, warm water conditions here. This uh, red water here is 63 degrees, starting to warm up on the front side of San Clemente. We still have the 62, 61 degree water here below the border. And some of us seem is even uh, sliding up to the Channel Island. So, really liking the way that it's starting to come together here. And with the current forecast, even with those hard blowing northwest winds, if that really does come true on Monday, um, it's not really going to die of the water temps really much at all because uh, we have a lot of island protection here. And um, it's going to be so, so short and so quick that it's not really going to hurt uh, those water temps. So, uh, now, if it was a two, three day event, definitely gonna see a drop. Um, but with uh, what we got going on here, I really don't anticipate that. So, uh, yeah, uh, went for a trip over the weekend, overnight on the Apollo. If you didn't know, the Apollo is now at 22nd Street uh, and the boat has moved up there. Uh, Greg is gonna be running the boat majority of the time, I believe. And um, it's going to be up there up until, I think, June. And then it's going to move down to C4, I think June, or late June, early July, somewhere around in there. Uh, but if you've never fished the Apollo before, I mean, it's it's a little yachty, man. It's it's a little too nice, actually. Uh, super clean boat. Uh, if you don't know Greg, really good attitude, really fishy guy. I uh, had a great time fishing with him and Jeff. And, um, yeah, Richie in the galley. Woo! Boy can cook, man. Let me tell you, I was very impressed. So I got a couple more trips on that boat this year. And then, um, yeah, 
So if you haven't had a chance, uh, if you didn't see uh, what we caught, but uh, we had limits of white sea bass, fishing was pretty darn good for us. And um, I believe that they do have some spots this week, so make sure you check out the 22nd Street schedule. I know a lot of people are focused on this early early season bluefin here, but you have the whole year to fish bluefin. And uh, kind of the early season is when I like to target sea bass more. It just, you know, they're not always around, but when they're around, you, you got to get after it. So they've had uh, been pretty good fishing lately, so I suggest definitely checking that out. And there's uh, a couple other boats at 22nd Street that have been targeting them also, so. Make sure you give those guys a good look. But, uh, yeah, that's a good option if you don't want to head up to uh, to Oxnard. Uh, again, fishing at Channel, Channel Islands has been pretty darn good. I mean, they have a couple, one or two boats have an off day here and there. But for the most part, Channel Islands for sea bass has been on fire for the last two weeks. Um, fishing for them up there sometimes a little bit different. Um, instead of using just your typical squid and a slider squid and a lead head a lot of guys are using just like last year those uh, white pearl swim baits you can either use the uh, the zoom uh, magnum super flukes or uh, in that white pearl color just match up with uh, a lead head or um, redemption swim baits is also makes some they've been dropping them off at random tackle shops so follow their instagram if you're trying to Grab a couple of those locally. That's your, your best way to, to get some of those. Um, but yeah, they really just kind of cast them at schools of uh, sea bass up there. A little bit different than uh, down south here at the other islands. But, um, you know, I've seen that technique work other places before too. Uh, so you can't rule it out. So just uh, adjust your technique to what the current bite is. So if you got a slower bite, you know, a little bit lighter line with some squid. Or if you know we got schooling fish that are on the surface, then cast uh, swim baits on. You know, just two different types of fishing for two different types of conditions. So, uh, moving further south, uh, Catalina remains still uh, a little bit on the slower side. There's squid around the island. Um, we tried to make some extra uh, the other night, but uh, couldn't really get it to float for us on the west side. But it's probably still some around. Uh, the Kinley Marie has been going back and forth. They actually were the ones that hooked us up with uh, a boatload of squid from what they already made. Um, but yeah, there's there's squid in other spots along the island, especially on the on the east end there too. So, uh, but if not, make sure you check out uh, some of the bait bait uh, barges. They're gonna have squid now. So once these guys have been bringing it back, uh, moving further south to San Clemente Island, still a little bit on the slow side. Uh, I think I think this is going to turn on here this week. Uh, if this wind remains just a short blip, I think you're going to see some yellowtail here on the front side. I think one was caught this week already, a nice home guard. Um, but as long as you got a little bit of current, you know this water temp is warm enough here. Right, any day this is just going to explode. So, uh, and usually when it does, it's you know that killer spring bite. So we'll see what happens from there. As for the rest of it, uh, people are still really focused on bluefin down here below the border, which I certainly understand. Um, fish are a lot closer now. Um, still majority of a night bite. Uh, a lot of the guys are just hopping on overnight boats. And, you know, these fish, you know, are as high as, you know, basically the corner. Um, majority is west of the 302 uh, down to here and even down to uh, the upper hidden really west still kind of in mexican waters nothing really at the butterfly yet uh that i've heard about um and definitely not the west butterfly so stick stick to the the warm water areas you kind of see the pattern here i mean this is an eight day chart so it's not the perfect pattern but um yeah things things are definitely improving here nighttime bite is still coming on jigs uh a little bit on the sinker rig um an option that i'm gonna try this year uh, I think I, I might have mentioned it last week. Is uh, a lot of guys have been using the sinker rig, doing the drop shot technique with uh, like a ring circle hook, and then uh, a torpedo weight at the bottom. And they've been putting hooks on torpedo weights, but that tor the torpedo weight, uh, the wire ends are not connected through through, through the middle. Um, there's just like a spade, and they're melted in there. So you really either, if that's what you really want to fish, you need to create a connection point between the two 
the two ends, whether it be, you know, a piece of 200 pound mono, you just crimp it in there. Or if you want to try and tie it tight, you can do that too. Uh, but you need something to anchor those two together because they're not connected. So I hate for you to hang a big fish on it if that is the case and then tear it out of your weight or bend it out and break it off. And then, uh, yeah, you, you're going to lose your fish too. So uh, what you can do is use uh, a proper weight uh, or a, a proper jig, uh, a similar shape and size, such as uh, West Coast Jiggers HD. Uh, put an assist hook on it. That becomes your torpedo weight. It's 350 grams, so it's plenty of weight to keep that thing down there. You can still use a ringed hook with a bait on it as a sinker rig, and you're kind of fishing both a jig and a bait at the same time and uh, I don't think there's any reason why that why that will not work especially for daytime uh, these fish haven't really been a ton on the surface you know we're not seeing those crazy foamers or anything like that so far we're seeing like a little bit of shiner here and there or a little bit of breezer um, so the fly line stuff during the day it, it can work but it's just gonna be really finicky and a lot harder so again most of the stuff is coming on at night, if you're in a private boat, uh, you know, daytime is probably going to be more of your action than the nighttime thing because you don't really have a six sonar and that type of capability. So use things like spreader bars, uh, fly kite, you know, stay away from the boat crowd. That's going to help you the best, especially on a finicky daytime bite. Um, if you do find some fish, you're going to catch jigs on them you know, or something like that, you know, fish it still on the lighter side, maybe 60 or 80 pound, uh, uh, fluorocarbon. You still have some fish up here and they're showing up in like with the 180 range at the, at the higher end. Um, but we're still seeing some of that, you know, 30, 40, 50 pound stuff too. So you kind of don't know what you're going to get till you're there. And, uh, if you can't see them, that's going to be a lot harder. So, um, again, during daytime, uh, if you're on a private boat, try and do your own thing. And uh, again, daytime fishing is completely opposite from nighttime. It's spooky. They don't want to be bothered. They don't like boat traffic. So if you see a lot of boats, uh, even if there is some fish around, I, I, I would stay away. I would try and get to the edge of that area. Um, and even if that means driving west more, which probably you're going to have better luck anyway. Um, but spread out stay away from the crowds. Uh, and again, uh, the sport boat technique and what they're doing is completely different uh, since mainly they're fishing nighttime uh, than the daytime. So you're gonna have a lot better chances doing your own thing uh, that way. So just be prepared for it all. But um, as far as jigs, otherwise during day daytime, Daiwa Sakanas, uh, casting, you know, Shimano cold snipers or current snipers, whatever you want to call them these days, uh, things like that on the surface work good too. And uh, once these things start foaming up, then we can really start, you know, throwing poppers or other other stuff at them. But um, right now, it just doesn't seem like that's the activity that, that we're seeing on the water. So, but all in all, I mean, the fish has been pretty darn good for bluefin. Can't really complain about that. Uh, I did want to point out that this green water is starting to form a red tide again. Um, it's hard to see on this chart here, unfortunately, because of the clouds, but... I'll give you the eight day, which is not the most reliable chart, but um, north of Newport, the green water is kind of been turning into this orange, which is uh, starting to turn into a red tide. So be on the lookout for it. Uh, unfortunately, that typically you know, turns off inshore fishing, but uh, you know your best uh, eyes on the water are really going to determine what the conditions actually are. These charts can only help you so much. So. It is what it is for now, but uh, hopefully we get past some of this May Gray or June Gloom, whatever you want to call it, and uh, the fishing season will continue to get better and better. So that's it for this week, guys. Take care. Enjoy. Cheers. Hey, thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and check out our website and online store at chasingprojects.com. And make sure you share the stoke.